happens out that we no longer want to eat dinner with one another. We no longer want to serve one another. And I'm not talking about people who have religious objections to participating in a same-sex wedding. I'm talking about if I don't like your political viewpoint, you are not allowed to enter my restaurant. Now, as I've said before, it's a free country. You can do whatever you want. You don't want me to eat in your restaurant because I'm a Republican? That's your business. You want to ban me from your private college campus like you did at DePaul University? That's your business, right? It's a free country. You can do that. Does it make for a better country? No. And I do want to distinguish here between trying to force somebody to participate via governmental intervention in somebody else's activity and whether something is good or not. So as I've said many times, I think that as a general rule, you should serve everybody who comes into your establishment. I don't think that necessarily means you have to serve everybody who comes into your establishment. I don't think that means that you must serve people who want special privileges or they want you to participate in a ceremony that you feel is immoral. But I do think that as a general rule, just as a good person, if I owned an establishment, I would service you if you came into my establishment. I wouldn't service a same-sex wedding because I have moral objections to a same-sex wedding, just as many of these bakers and photographers do. But if I owned a restaurant like Chick-fil-A, I would allow anybody to eat there just as Chick-fil-A does. And I think that is the moral thing to do. I think that is the right thing to do. Again, you have the freedom to reject anybody. So there's been a big brouhaha over the weekend because it turns out that Sarah Huckabee Sanders went to a restaurant called The Red Hen in Lexington, Virginia. And Stephanie Wilkinson, who's the owner of The Red Hen in Lexington, asked the press secretary to leave the restaurant on Friday evening. She, told, she, she apparently took a staff vote before privately asking Sanders to leave the restaurant. And Sanders replied, that's fine. I'll go. One diner posted an image of 86 next to her name, industry slang for kick out. So the owner of the Red Hen restaurant has revealed why she refused to serve the White House press secretary. On Friday night, Sanders was asked to leave the Lexington, Virginia restaurant where she was dining with her seven family members. And restaurant owner Stephanie Wilkinson said she took a staff vote before asking Sanders to leave. When they voted to boot her out, Wilkinson complied. Tell me what you want me to do. I can ask her to leave. And they said yes. So apparently she started texting to all of her employees about it. She said, I'm not a huge fan of confrontation. I have a business and I want the business to thrive. This feels like the moment in our democracy when people have to make uncomfortable actions and decisions to uphold their morals. Well, this doesn't really uphold your morals to throw somebody out of your restaurant if you disagree with them politically. But, you know, again, it's a free country. You can do what you want. Well, Sarah Huckabee Sanders then tweeted out about this and she tweeted out what exactly happened. And she didn't call for a boycott against the restaurant. She said, last night I was told by the owner of the Red Hen in Lexington, Virginia to leave because I work for the president and I politely left. Her actions say far more about her than about me. I always do my best to treat people, including those I disagree with respectfully, and will continue to do so. So there are a bunch of separate issues we need to separate out here. One, is it bad to throw people out of your restaurant because you disagree with them politically? The answer is yes. Two, do you have the right to tweet about it? The answer is yes. Three, do you have a right to boycott that restaurant because of that activity? The answer, of course, is yes. Now, when are boycotts appropriate? Well, I think a boycott of the Red Hen here is not inappropriate. The reason being that it's appropriate to boycott a restaurant or a photographer or a baker, for that matter, if they're private political perspective translates over into their business. Now, I may not agree with a particular boycott, but I don't think it's wildly inappropriate to boycott. I think it's inappropriate to boycott Chick-fil-A, for example, because Chick-fil-A doesn't actually discriminate against anybody. Chick-fil-A doesn't actually have any rules that blow back on anybody. So boycotting them over the private views of their owner seems to me completely counterproductive and stupid. Boycotting the Red Hen over what they did to Sarah Huckabee Sanders or even boycotting a baker with whom I, do, with whom I agree about same-sex marriage for not catering a same-sex wedding, all of that seems to me within the realm of permissible dialogue. All of that makes a certain amount of sense, even if I agree with what one business did and disagree with what another business did. But instead, what the left has done is the left, the left which says that you should not be allowed. The government should force you. The government should force you to bake that cake. The government should force you to make that pizza. The government should force you to photograph that wedding. The same left that says that says it's wonderful that a business just kicked out Sarah Huckabee Sanders. That I don't understand at all. To make that case requires an amount of hypocrisy that is well beyond the norm. And even some folks on the left are acknowledging this, right? Like the Washington Post editorial board wrote a piece saying that people should let Sarah Huckabee Sanders basically eat where she wants to eat. And they say, we nevertheless would argue that Ms. Huckabee and Ms. Nielsen and Mr. Miller, too, should be allowed to eat dinner in peace. The reason they mention Christian Nielsen is because something else happened to Christian Nielsen I want to talk about in just a second. She's the Secretary of Homeland Security. The Washington Post says, those who are insisting that we are in a special moment justifying incivility should think for a moment how many Americans might find their own special moment. How hard is it to imagine, for example, people who strongly believe that abortion is murder deciding that judges or other officials who protect abortion rights should not be able to live peaceably with their families? Down that road lies a world in which the only the most zealous sign up for public service. That benefits no one. 
I think that's exactly right from the Washington Post. Shockingly, they get this one right. David Axelrod tweeted something out that was very similar. He tweeted out that he was appalled by Democrats cheering this. He said, kind of amazed and appalled by the number of folks on left who applauded the expulsion of press secretary and her family from a restaurant. This, in the end, is a triumph for Donald Trump's vision of America. Now we're divided by red plates and blue plates. Hashtag sad. Now, the reality is this stuff does benefit President Trump. It does benefit President Trump because when you escalate these conversations to the point of no return, when you escalate to the point when we can't have a civil society together, then Trumpian punching looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. I'll give you an example. So this was not the worst example over the weekend. There were several examples of this sort of uncivil, boorish behavior over the weekend. So Kirsten Nielsen, this happened late last week. She was eating at a restaurant in Washington, D.C., and a bunch of protesters decided to crash the restaurant. It wasn't the owners. The owners were fine with her eating there. A bunch of outside protesters decided to crash the restaurant and to yell at her until she left. And then she did leave. Okay, that was terrible. And then Pam Bondi, who's the Florida attorney general, she was spit on. So left-wing activists saw Pam Bondi on the street, and they started chasing her down to harass her and spit on her. Here's a little bit of what it sounded like. So what exactly did Pam Bondi do that was so bad? She went to a screening of a Mr. Rogers documentary. No, I am not kidding. She went to a screening of a documentary about Mr. Rogers, the leading advocate for civility over the past half century in the United States. And then left-wing activists came and shouted her down. So Christian Nielsen, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary, run out of a restaurant for the great sin of working for the Trump administration. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, barred from a restaurant by the owners for the great sin of working for the Trump administration. Pam Bondi screamed at on the street for the great sin of being a Republican and being in favor of Rick Scott's policy on health care. Now, I will say that I think Huckabee Sanders' situation is slightly different from the Christian Nielsen and Pam Bondi situations, specifically because the owner does have a right to kick people out of their place. What you don't have a right to do, you actually do not have the right to walk into somebody else's restaurant and harass somebody until they leave, right? So just legally speaking, the people who showed up at the restaurant with Christian Nielsen, she should have sat there and she should have made the police come and arrest those people, right? She shouldn't have left. She should have said to the restaurant owners, call the police because this is harassment, right? This is actually a violation of specific rights. You are not allowed to go into somebody else's place of business and shut down the business because you are having a problem with one of the patrons who's patronizing that business. The worst example, however, of incivility over the weekend was none of these. It was Maxine Waters. So Maxine Waters is just awful. Maxine Waters is indeed a moron. Uh, she's been a moron for 30 years, uh, at least as long as I've been following her in American politics. I'm only 34 years old. And I remember when I was very young, 1992, L.A. riots. I was eight years old. And Maxine Waters was out there calling it the L.A. uprising and talking about how necessary it was. It did a billion dollars in property damage and ended with people dead. And she was talking about how wonderful it was. She's been just the worst kind of politician in a, an American public life for decades now. Well, she went out there and she was at the, the federal building over on Wilshire Boulevard. And she was doing some event and she started screaming and yelling about why it is that we should now harass people in their homes. We should shut people down. Christian Nielsen, by the way, Protesters showed up outside her home, the Department of Homeland Security secretary. They showed up outside her home. They were protesting. The same thing has happened to Chuck Schumer on immigration, right? Democrats, it's happening to too. But Maxine Waters loves this stuff. And so she's going to push tactics that are by any historical metric far closer to brown shirt Nazi tactics than anything the Trump administration has done at the border. Here's Maxine Waters. Do you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store? At a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Okay, I mean, that's an insane statement. What she is talking about there is essentially a fascist jackboot tactic. Yeah, I'm going to read you a section from a, a great three volume history of Nazi Germany. Now, again, I'm not saying that she is a Nazi. I'm saying this is a Nazi tactic, okay? It is a Nazi tactic to say that you're going to get a bunch of people together and you're going to go harass public officials when they stop at a gas station. Okay, that, I'm not saying she's a Nazi. Again, I'm not saying her policies are Nazi policies. I'm saying this is a brown shirt tactic because it is a far closer tactic to brown shirtism than anything that Trump has done at the southern border, including arresting people and then by dint of Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruling separating kids from parents. I'm going to explain in a second why I am not being shy about using a Nazi analogy here because I think that Nazi analogies are appropriate. When Maxine Waters says that people should get out at gas stations and they should shout, no peace, no sleep, no peace, no sleep. And when she says that in a department store at a gas station, you get out and you create a crowd and you push back on them and you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. 
and tell people they're not welcome in public life, that is, in fact, a fascist tactic. Okay, that tactic, is, again, I'm going to say it for the 30th time. I'm not saying that, not, that, that Maxine Waters is a Nazi. I am saying that this is a Nazi tactic. Okay, this is a fascist tactic. Now, there are people who argue that fascism is only the government that's coming in and, and using you know, force to compel you to, to obey the government. That that's, that's the only definition of fascism. What I'm talking about here is a philosophically, culturally fascist tactic, and that is destroying the social fabric in the name of politics by destroying every public space and using violent means to shut them down, right? Antifa shutting down speeches. That's a fascist tactic. And this is a fascist tactic too. This is a section from Richard Evans' book, The Coming of the Third Reich, considering the treatment of social Democrat Reichstag deputy Otto Buckwitz in Silesia. Here's what it says. Brown shirts, this is in 1931, before the Nazis took power. So for those who say that Nazism only, oh, you can only say Nazi once somebody's in power in the government. That's just not true. The Nazis existed before they were in power in the government. Here's what it says. Brown shirts occupied the seats at his meetings, shouted insults at him, and on one occasion fired a shot at him, causing mass panic amongst his listeners and leading to a brawl in which more shots were fired by both stormtroopers and Reichsbannermen. Several Nazis and social Democrats had to be taken to the hospital and not a single table or chair in the hall was left intact. Here we go. This is the part that's interesting. After this, gangs of eight to 10 Nazi stormtroopers harassed Buckwitz outside his house when he left for work in the morning. 20 or more cr crowded around him when he came back to his office after lunch. And between one and 200 hassled him on his way home, singing a specially composed song with the words, when the revolvers are shot, Buckwitz will cop the lot. Nazi demonstrators always halted outside his house, chanting death to Buckwitz. Okay, so har harassing people outside their homes, bullying them from gas stations, bullying them from restaurants, these public confrontations over politics, these are a serious and dangerous business. So here is the basic rule for a civilized society. You have the right to refuse service to anyone you choose. Yes, that applies to Red Hen. You have the right to criticize that, that restaurant. You have the right to protest any public official in a public setting. You do not have the right to invade someone else's property, to harass someone dining in a public place, or to harass people at their homes, as with Christian Nielsen. Waters' approach is way worse than what happened at the Red Hen. Now, what Waters did is way worse than what happened to Sarah Huckabee Sanders at the Red Hen. And every Democrat should be asked on the record today what Maxine Waters said about what Maxine Waters said. They should be asked whether they agree with Maxine Waters' tactics here, whether they think that that is something that